I'm someone who's always been very vocal about my relationship with God. And if I feel like there's something that I might want to share with someone else because I feel like I need to know that God shared with me, then I'm definitely going to let them know. But I feel like somewhere along the lines, it seems like I'm speaking some ancient language from Egypt when I say things like, God shared this with me or God said this to me. You know what I mean? And it's like, well, what do you mean by that? This led me to the conclusion that Gen Z cannot hear God. Now, obviously, it's not completely exclusive, but considering the like state we are in as a generation, I feel like this is more relevant to Gen Z. And if you're watching this video, then you probably already have a relationship with Jesus. And so you'll probably already hear from God quite a lot. But I feel like there are always things that we can improve on as followers of Christ in order to hear God more clearly. And so in this video, I'll be going through some of the hindrances that will hinder us from hearing God and what we can do to counter them in order to advance in our relationship with him. Now, I'm going to be honest, I also struggle with these as well, but obviously I'm still working on them. And I feel like just telling them to y'all will help me also like keep myself accountable and say, you know what? I did say that. Let me act on it. Now, the first hindrance that may be well hindering you from hearing God is overstimulation. Your brain has a tendency of prioritizing whatever gives it the most dopamine. And for most people, that does not include prayer and reading the word. And so you may find yourself doing all of these things like going on social media, listening to music, playing video games all day. And then when it's time for you to actually pray and read the word, it's too cognitively demanding. Kidding me. I just did that. And what sort of happens is that to God, you're like that one friend who has ADHD. He's always saying the most random things. He's never able to hold eye contact. It's a whole awkward situation. And God is someone who just like, he's patient. And so how do we counter this? The first thing you can do to counter overstimulation is setting boundaries. Now, we don't only set boundaries with people, but also with our internet usage habits. So I have a few things that I do that may be able to help you. And obviously these all work based on your willingness to allow them to work so the first thing you can do is just delete social media apps off your phone so i'm like one of those guys who just don't have social media apps on my phone because i know if i had a social media app on my phone i'll be on it all day just wasting time and i also have this app called block it on my ios device it allows me to block certain features or social media websites so whenever i'm on social media for example youtube you know there are no distractions like i won't see shorts i won't see this i won't see that so i'll be completely like undistracted while i'm there and i can focus on actually doing what's important you know because social media obviously is not a bad thing but it can become a bad thing when used incorrectly this app really does help me i have it linked in the description if you want to go check it out it does cost a bit but you pay like once per year and i feel like it's really good value for money and speaking of social medias i do be posting on you know other social media platforms as well so if you want to check me out on instagram on like tiktok and stuff i'll be there i know some of y'all been saying i should do both devotionals and long form content but like, yo, that's a bit tricky. So I'm like, what if I just like post, you know, the other social medias? And then if y'all want like the devotionals, you just go there. But anyways, onto the video. The second thing you can do to reduce overstimulation is to apply the law of vital few. I got this step from this book called like Deep Work. I'm not sure if y'all know it by Cal Newport. Really good book. I mean, it's not a Christian book, but it's just an all around amazing book. But basically th this law states that if a social media is not helping you advance in your purpose or your career or it's not necessarily benefiting you on any higher level then you shouldn't have it because as people we tend to have this any benefit mindset like okay if this benefits me in some way then i should have it in my life right but that's not necessarily a good mindset to have because you're just expending too much attention and time by eliminating certain things it won't benefit you as much you just have a lot more time to focus on the things that really do benefit you a lot more so for example if you're just scrolling on ig wasting time on instagram like just not doing anything productive then maybe you shouldn't have instagram in the first place maybe you should just like delete instagram you know what i mean because if you really like know you're wasting time on there all the time then what's the point of you being on there in the first place you know also something i might need to learn myself it's also a kind of like bitter fact that i'm gonna just spill out there but if all you're doing on a social media is wasting time being a consumer of other people's productions you're just like letting other people benefit off your most valuable asset which is your time and attention something you should be guarding very closely and not allowing for everyone to have i'd say the most important social media you should have is youtube which show from content from like ig and tiktok yes you do have you know education and you are educated but it's not as valuable as maybe watching a long-form video that you need to invest a lot of time into and maybe take notes 
notes. Because let's be honest, like if you're on IG, you don't have a notebook on you and you're not writing down anything. Just keep it a buck. But on YouTube, let's say you're watching a Miles Monroe video or maybe one of my videos, you might have a notebook in front of you, something like this, and you're just there jotting down, you know what I mean? So I feel like YouTube is a really good one. Maybe like Quora as well, something like that. Okay, maybe not Quora. Quora can be a bit risque. Social medias that are not too reliant on short form content. Obviously, you can still have them, but if you feel like Ayo does not give me any value whatsoever, then maybe just cut it out after you follow me, of course. <laughs> okay, now nah, I'm just playing, bro. Like, yeah, but definitely do that. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians, it's 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12, and in it Paul says, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. And basically what he's trying to say in this verse is that, look, you can technically do anything you want. I mean, God has given you that free will, but not everything is going to help you grow closer to him. You know what I mean? And so if you know something is holding you back again, maybe just cut it out. You know what? Because it could also lead way to sin. The next step is to substitute. Now, if you implement the following steps, you're going to have a lot of time on your hands, right? And you want to actually fill this time up with productive things. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself falling back into the same cycles again of going on IG, going on TikTok, all this stuff, wasting time. And so obviously, some good things to do would be to like do things that give you gradual gratification instead of instant gratification, like going on walks, spending time in the word, prayer, you know working on a hobby going to the gym maybe you know and the reason why we're doing these things is because they are tasks that regulate our dopamine levels right they're not as flashy they don't really feel too good in the moment probably for the first like couple of you know days or weeks it's gonna feel like kind of boring right that's because your dopamine receptors are fried and so by doing these things that just seem kind of boring you are regulating your dopamine. That'll make it more pleasant for you to do certain things like spending time with God. I honestly find myself trying to have like quiet time, just sit down, just listen to what God has to say. And I swear I'll be there for like five minutes, then I'm gone, bro. Then I'm gone. I'm on to the next thing. So I definitely also need to like work on that as well. And obviously, you probably already know that God can speak to you through social media, which is true. But I feel like the only reason why God is speaking to you through social media is because, well, you just spend a lot of time on social media and it's to find some other way to get your attention but if you just cut off social media it's not like you won't hear from god you still hear from god but just not on social media and like just in a probably way better way that involves you having to like go out into the world and you know experience some stuff actually live you feel me now moving on to the second thing that may be hindering you from hearing god clearly and that's not knowing god now it's possible and this is a hard pill to swallow but it's possible that you maybe just don't know god now what do i mean by this now you might know about God as in I've read about him in the Bible and heard about him and things of that nature but you might not know him in the sense of being able to distinguish your voice and his voice or the devil's voice and his voice and your voice Isaiah 29 verse 13 says wherefore the Lord said for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. I heard this verse being quoted by Jesus in like, Matthew, but I found the original one. So I don't know the, like the exact context. I'll definitely advise reading through the whole thing. I'll do so as well, maybe drop like an update in the comments but basically this verse is just trying to say that you know a lot of people they'll say yeah I love God. Oh yeah, I love Jesus, but their hearts are removed from him. You know what I mean? They don't really have that desire to like get to know him, but they'll always say, oh yeah, I love God. Oh yeah, this, that, 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 and the third. And those are the kind of people who are going to hear apart from me for I never knew you. And they're going to be like, whoa, haven't we casted out demons in your name? Haven't we done good works in your name? And so what can we do to counter this? And the first thing I can advise is to spend time in the word. Now imagine this situation. You're blindfolded in a room with two strangers having a conversation. Tell me, would you be able to distinguish between who's who? Obviously not, right? Because number one, these two people are strangers. You don't actually know them. And number two, you're blindfolded. So obviously we have two problems here. And I feel like this can be a situation with God we don't actually know him because God is in the spirit. So we cannot physically see him talking to us. But by spending time in the word, we gain an understanding of God's character who he is, how he behaves, what kind of things he might do. And so that helps us identify him in our everyday lives. Let's say someone just does not read the Bible at all, does not know a lot 
about the Bible, you know what I mean? And they say something along the lines of, oh, God told me that even though I sinned, you know, it's okay because he died on a cross. So that means that everything is fine and I can just continue doing everything as normal. I don't need to change a single thing. Even though I've sinned and done wrong, it's okay. It's cool. Now, this may sound to that person like something that God might say. You know, it sounds like a sense of mercy. Like, oh yeah, you know, I've sinned, but God forgives me. So everything is okay. You know what I mean? And to some extent, that may be true, but not necessarily. Because if you look in the word of God, specifically in James 2 verse 26, right? James tells us that for as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. This verse clearly tells us to some degree that, yeah, even though it's really a good thing to have faith in the fact that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, it doesn't mean a thing if we're not willing to like actually change. Because yes, we don't free ourselves from sin. Jesus did die on the cross, but we need to actually deny ourselves and carry our cross as Jesus did say, right? So we have a parts of play and so why this person thinking oh nah you know i sinned but that's cool he's sort of you know being the lulu to some extent and so we cannot afford to do that that's why we need to spend time in the word the second thing we can do to counter not knowing god is to spend time in prayer specifically quiet time in prayer as cool and as convenient as it would be if god had this like loud and demanding voice that's unfortunately not always the case you know what i mean so if you want to actually hear from God, you have to do it through this thing called quiet time, right? This is where you just kind of like sit and preferably open up your Bible, read through it, meditate on whatever is going through your mind and try and identify God and all that. Yeah, you know, it's very, again, cognitively demanding and very daunting, but it's something that must be done if we actually want to like hear from God. He always has something to say, but we have to be there to like listen. And so something I would suggest you work on, and I'm also working on as well, is scheduling time throughout the day to just have quiet time. Right? Instead of just talking to God, just, you know, being there, praying, saying, oh God, please do this, please do that. Thank you for this, thank you for that. All that, all that, all that. Maybe you actually listen, because how would you feel if you're having a conversation with someone, you know, maybe a girl or something, and they're just yapping, but they never allow you to actually say something in response. You know what I mean? It's going to be kind of like weird, right? Like, hey, yo, I had something to say too. And I feel like we do that as well with God. We just like be yapping, but we never just get some time to just, hey, what is he saying? You know, the third thing that may be hindering you from hearing God clearly is disobedience. So if you decide to willfully go against god's will you know and continue to live in sin willfully he may warn you and let you know like hey yo bro this is not cool but if you still choose to like do your own thing then he's gonna let you do your own thing for real and essentially you become like that one homie in the friend group who switched up because of a girl but what happens when you switch up on the friend group eventually that girl you know, it's going to leave you or you're going to leave them because of some like reason. This always happens. And then you're going to go back to the friend group being like, oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I switched up on y'all. And the friend group might forgive you. But obviously things will never be the same because you broke the guy code. You feel me? And so that's kind of like how it be with God. You might switch up on God and then you realize that, hey, yo, my way actually kind of sucks. Then you're going to go back to God again. You feel me? And so how can we counter disobedience? I say the first thing we can do is to ask for God's will to be done. In James 4 verse 3, we got another James verse. I mean, this guy been cooking for real. It says, ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. See, a lot of times we be asking God for things right, out of our own you know, desires. And then when, when God doesn't answer our prayers, you know, some of us will let it go. But some of us, you know, this kind of includes me sometimes. We'll take things into our own initiative and decide, you know what? Because you want to do it, God, I'm going to do it myself. And obviously this turns out bad every single time. right? But I feel like the best thing to do and the best way to stay obedient it's just always ask for God's will to be done. Because when you ask for God's will to be done, you gain a sense of understanding of how God operates right, and what God wants. And you start to realize that, look, Yah's way 
is the best way, okay? And then all of a sudden, your desires start to align with God's. And that is actual obedience. Obedience isn't supposed to be forcing yourself, right? You're not supposed to force yourself. No, there should be some willingness, you feel me? Some willingness to like actually want to do it and that's true obedience and the second thing you want to do is hang around the right people in first corinthians 15 verse 33 paul says to us be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners some of y'all might know it as bad company corrupts good character but same thing you probably already know what this means right when you hang around the wrong type of people you will at a certain point compromise your morals and values in order to fit in with them right that's kind of how peer pressure works and so by just avoiding those kind of people overall you just fix a very big problem you know in a very like easy way because at the end of the day you know people like to say oh but jesus hanging around prostitutes and jesus you know was talking to all these people who did all these things but bro you not jesus Okay, you're not Jesus. I'm not trying to be Jesus. <laughs> so, I'll say just step out of there, okay? In Proverbs 13, verse 20, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. This is sort of like that quote that says, A man who hangs around four fools becomes the fifth. You know what I mean? If you, like, hang around a bunch of fools, you're a fool. If you hang around wise people, you wise. If you hang around godly men and women, you become a godly man, a godly woman. Simple as that. So find people at your school, church, at your social gatherings and events that are Christ-centered, who follow God, you know what I mean, and can keep you accountable. And people always struggle with this. They be like, hey, yo, I don't actually know where to look in my country, you know. People are Muslim, people are what, what. And I get that. And so I'll say, like, for you, I got a little sum, okay, and that's the Discord, okay? I have a Discord server for some of y'all who don't know. You know, it's pretty active. We get active there. And so if you want to, like, communicate with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and, you know, just learn, just grow, that's a pretty good place to start, okay? So make sure to click the link in the description. Obviously, it'll be linked below. And join. I also try to be more active on there because I don't be active on Discord, I'll be honest, but I'm going to definitely try. Okay, but yeah, you now have everything you need to start hearing God clearly. You know, if you actually put your mind to it and implement the following steps, bro, like, I know a lot of people be saying like, oh, God's not answering me, but it's because they're not actually listening because of these factors. So if you remove these hindrances and you just do the things that will help you elevate, then you won't be able to get enough of God. Let me just say that for sure. Okay. And again, as I said, I need to work on this as well. Okay, like some of these, like overstimulation, especially, like I be on like IG dog so much. I'm not gonna lie to you. So maybe things like that, I need to start working on. You know, definitely need to start working on. So we're on the same boat, <laughs> okay? But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the Jesus Gang because we put out videos all the time. Thank you for watching. We did appreciate that. Thank you for all your support. You know. I actually kind of enjoy making these kinds of videos, these long form videos. So if you want to see more, definitely obviously know what you know what to do. Also leave a like, it does help a lot. Check out my socials again. And I will see y'all in the next one. Peace out. Oh my goodness. I can't take it anymore. Eating a burger with no honey mustard. Isaiah, you go dumb. Wake up and I pray. When I pray that we have a good day. No sight, we work in my faith. And then that we say now, grace, grace. Wake up and I pray. And I smack a demon in my face. Come on, come on. Specifically in James 2, verse 26, right? James tells us that for as the body without the spirit. For as the body without the spirit, for as the body without the spirit is dead. Mama. Yeah, get all about it, no. Okay. Why are oranges called oranges, but an apple is not called red? Oh my goodness. 
I can't take it anymore. Eating a burger with no honey mustard. Eating a burger with no honey mustard. Eating a burger with no honey mustard.